Look, the community is still growing. There's many new entrants into the market, which is fantastic. We relish that. And more people contributing to the open source community uh, means a stronger open source product and more stable environment for everyone involved. In Australia, at least, I think maybe we were a little bit behind the rest of the world initially, but I'd seen this big uptick in people who want to deploy real enterprise apps right now on top of OpenStack. It's more pilot than proof of concept because people know and trust of it, so yeah. know it works now. Yeah, exactly, right? They're no longer saying, oh, does this thing work at all? They're saying, we know it works, we want to make sure it works for us, and that pilot very rapidly turns into a production deployment. We're still looking at open source, open stack, and what that really means for the future, um, and I don't think we're there yet. Lots to come. You want a high five? Yeah. We started getting involved uh, with OpenStack back in late 2012. Our, our second customer was a little company called DreamHost. It was super brutal in the early days and it was kind of chaotic and, and hard to work with and manage. And it's gotten to the point now where you can take a distribution, deploy it in an environment and be very successful without very much overhead at all. I feel like I've got a guy on my team and he's automated the deployment on almost every OpenStack variant that you know of. And it's just one guy. And so it's a, a kind of an attribution to all the people who work in OpenStack and in the community to make it such an, an awesome technology and really solve a lot of the problems that the industry has been looking for. Every single conversation about technology we're building is really, really option focused, which means everything happening is in the community and the option. So that's our RMB model. So I think we are living with innovation. The big thing with open source is, you know, it's free, but it's not free of obligation, even if that, you know, licensing in terms of the obligation is just like by the guy that wrote it a beer or something like that. I think that's probably the, you know, the main message. I think that's an innovative part uh, when we're hearing a lot about the community when sometimes you have the research organizations and the IT organizations, they, they're kind of thinking, oh, OpenStack is risk, what is security in OpenStack? And I think we're looking at bringing that security to, into OpenStack, I mean, security to run some of the pet workloads in OpenStack. Yeah, I mean, we're starting to see, um, we're starting to use open source uh, SDN controllers in, in conjunction with, with OpenStack to build a software-defined infrastructure just beyond the data center and out into the WAN. OpenStack as a standalone thing is, I think people are coming to terms with the fact that that's not really where it's at. The idea is to try and build an innovative solution that uses OpenStack and other components to, to solve your problems in new ways. No, I'd say edge networking is, is probably the thing, definitely in the far future, I think we're gonna see a real spike. People are gonna be excited, especially at the Sydney Summit. Yeah. People are gonna to wanna to come and check out the, the edge networking for uh, at the forum. So in our events, uh, just as you see here today, we've got people working together to try and make OpenStack a better place. Come to the summit, uh, November 6th to 8th in Sydney, come to the forum, get involved in OpenStack. Yes, please.